Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and this video is brought to you by our sponsors over at 3D4Medical.com, the creators of this app and many other anatomy apps. Uh, 3D anatomy app specifically for the iPad, so you can check them out in the App Store. This one is called Essentials, Essential Anatomy, um, and it's pretty sweet, and you'll see it as I record this video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the structures on the distal humerus. We're beginning to talk about the bones of the arm and the forearm. And the first bone of the arm that we want to look at is the humerus. That's this guy right here. So let's look at that. You can fade the others um, and pay attention to that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at the distal humerus because we looked at the proximal humerus when we were talking about the shoulder. And now that we're into the arm and forearm, we're going to be looking at the distal part of the humerus and the structures that we find there. So what are the structures that we find on the distal end of the humerus? The first one I'm going to look at, um, keep in mind that this is medial and this is lateral. So the first structure we're going to look at is called the trochlea. And the trochlea is this structure here that uh, we can call also the medial condyle. Now, trochlea comes from a Latin word that means pulley. And if you look at the structure of that trochlea, it kind of looks like a pulley um, that you would be using to, um, you know, move certain objects at a certain angle and all that fun stuff. So that hair that looks like a pulley, looks kind of like a spool actually, a spool of thread also, um, that is called the trochlea, and that is going to be your medial condyle. And then just lateral to that, we have another structure that's called the capitulum. I like that word, capitulum. That's also called the lateral condyle. Um, and a capitulum, that comes from a Latin word that means a little head. And it kind of looks like this little round head um, right here on the lateral aspect of that distal, humor, distal humerus. So first we have our capitulum that's lateral, um, and we have medially our trochlea. Then we have the epicondyle. So we spoke about the lateral and medial condyles. Now we're going to talk about the epicondyle. And when you hear that word, that prefix epi, that means upon. So right upon or right um, here, you'll see we have our medial epicondyle and our lateral epicondyle. Maybe we have to turn that a little bit to see the lateral. Yeah, that looks a little better. So this is our lateral epicondyle right here. And this structure medially is our medial epicondyle epicondyle. If you take your, your fingers and you palpate the medial aspect of your elbow, you'll feel this big bulge, right? That's your medial epicondyle. That's this guy that you um, see right here. You can see it's significantly larger than the lateral epicondyle. And if you were to palpate uh, the lateral aspect right there by your, uh, your elbow, you won't feel as big a bump as if you do it medially. So that's our medial and lateral epicondyles. And then just above those, we're going to have our lateral and medial epicondylar, I mean, supracondylar ridges. So this is our medial supracondylar ridge, and this is our lateral supracondylar ridge ridge. And a ridge is exactly what it sounds like. You can see it if I look at it from the side. Um, it looks a little sharper that way. This is your medial epicondyle, uh, epicondylar, supracondylar uh, ridge. Remember, epicondyles right upon the condyles. And then we have our supracondylar ridges that are projecting up away from the epicondyles. And then, on the anterior surface, we have a little fossa. Uh, anytime you hear fossa, it comes from the Latin word that means a ditch, right? So on the anterior aspect, we have our coronoid fossa, which is this guy right here. Why do we call it the coronoid fossa? Well, right here 
on the ulna will have a structure that we call the coronoid process. And when you flex your elbow, what's going to happen is that coronoid process is going to go around the trochlea and fit right here into the, uh, the, the coronoid fossa. Okay? And then lateral to that, we're going to have another little ditch, another little fossa that we call the radial fossa. And that's right above the capitulum. And the reason we call it the radial fossa is because right here you have the head of the radius. And when you go into elbow flexion, once again, that the head of the radius is going to go around the capitulum. And, and there's this groove for it right there um, that's called the radial fossa. One more structure we need to know on the distal humerus, and to do that, we're going to turn this guy around, and we're actually going to look at it on the opposite side. And that is another fossa um, on the posterior aspect, and that is going to be a little larger. It's kind of triangular shaped. Um, that is going to be your olecranon fossa. And the reason we call it the olecranon uh, fossa is because when you extend your elbow or you extend your arm, we have this structure on the ulna that's called the olecranon process. And that's going to fit right there into that groove that we call the olecranon fossa. So let's review really quick. We have our, and we're going to start from the back since we're already at, at, at this view. This structure is called the olecranon fossa. Then we turn him around and go to the anterior aspect. And we're going to have, medially, we have our trochlea. Laterally, we have our capitulum. Then we have our medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle, we have our medial supracondylar ridge and lateral supracondylar ridge. We have our coronoid fossa and we have our radial fossa. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some value from it. Of course, if you want more videos like this and other resources to help make biology fun, head on over to the website interactive-biology.com. This is Leslie Samuel. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.